Okay, so for the warm-up today, you are going to need an elastic band and your own body and a good spot in your living room to work in. So, I'm gonna have Swal and Kenneth here demo the movements. We're gonna start off with the first one, which is a drop squat. Drop it like a squat. So you're gonna start with your feet underneath the hips, so more narrow than your regular squatting stance. From there, you literally drop yourself into a good squat. Let's go, gentlemen. Come back up, get your feet back in, drop into a squat. Great weightlifting drill, also great bootcamp movement. You load up the leg, explosive catching. This is very tough for you to do in the first round. Get a couple of regular air squats in before starting. You guys can rest here. That is good. Now, what we will show you is the second movement, which is a bent pull apart. Now, you're gonna have your arms in front of the body, extend it, bend in between your hands. There's tension on the band, and you're gonna literally pull the band apart until it touches your chest, and you come come back in. Now, the range of motion here, guys, is gonna be decided by whatever you can handle with the band. I need to see constant tension on the band. That is the most important thing to look for here. Make sure the wrist stay aligned with the elbow and the shoulder, and then if you have a slight bend in the elbow, that you keep it throughout, and you don't go from flexing to extending that joint, because then you're gonna involve the triceps, which we try, try to avoid here. Now, our third movement is gonna put us in a A-frame. So, we're gonna go into the A-frame, and then we're gonna get some shoulder taps in to warm up the shoulders even more which we will need for the 1,000 burpees that we do in the workout today. So in that A-frame, you're gonna alternatively pull up an arm and touch the same shoulder on the way down. Here we go, that is perfectly done. Now while you're doing this, you're also doing a downward dog action, right? So you're actively pressing your heels towards the floor, keeping your butt up pointed to the ceiling, and make sure you're pressing very hard in the floor with the arm that is still standing there. Nice alternating shoulder taps in A-frame. Now you guys can stand up. Now. The last movement that we will show you in this warm-up is to get the heart rate up just a tiny bit and that's going to be a jumping jack. So, let's get a couple of jumping jacks here, gentlemen. There we go. So this is just, it's not to kill time, it's just to get a couple of explosive movements in, get the ankles warmed up, get the calves warmed up and get your heart rate up just a nice and tiny bit here. Alright, rest. Now, we're gonna bring it over to Kenneth because he's going to show you two injury options. One for the drop squat and then one for the jumping jack. For the drop squat, we're going to do tuck jumps. So this is if you have bad squatting mechanics for the knee, right? So the knee hurts, I still want you to do this, right? If the landing hurts, in that case, I just want you to go for a regular air squat instead. Nice and slow air squats are always good to do. Just half the reps if you do tuck jumps, but keep it 10 reps if you do regular air squats. Now, if jumping jacks are an issue, I want you to go into a wide sumo stance, hinge from the hip, and then reach alternatively with the left arm to the right foot, and opposite, and keep moving in that twisting rotation here. Instead of doing 25 jumping jacks, I want you to do exactly 14 of this rotation movement. 14, great number. So these were all four of the movements. One, two, three, four. We get them together, put the number eight on it, and we have our quality MRAP. That's how easy it is, guys. I need you guys to start with us on the quality MRAP here. Don't go for score, just go for a quality movement, right? Say the word quality five times in a row, then you know what I actually mean. Are you still with us, or are you just sitting there looking at us? I need you guys to join, man. Come on. I'm gonna set my timer. I need you to get off the couch and fucking join the warm up. Beep. Starting in three, two, one. Let's go. 10 drop squats. Boom. So, very sorry for the people living underneath. Maybe you put a note underneath that door right before starting this little warm up here, catching all that squat noise in the floor. 10 reps of that. Again, rise with the bad knees, throw in a normal squat or throw in a tuck jump if the catching is very hard for you to do. And then we move on to 15 band pull aparts, just focusing on one thing solely, and that is quality. Right? Really get your arm nice and long, shoulders pointed and pinched down, wrist in line with the shoulder, pull the band apart, and as I always say with that band, keep tension on it. Please do so. After 15, we go into our A frame and we're going to make 20 shoulder taps, 
alternating. That means eventually you'll do 10 reps a side where you alternate the reps. Make sure you keep your legs nice and long, your butt up pointed to the ceiling, and you're actively pressing your body into the floor from the heels to the hands. There we go. Nice A-frame, good shoulder taps. And then we finish off the round with 25 of the jumping jacks to get the heart rate up. And I will tell you, it'll go up. A round like this will take 90 seconds, closer to two minutes. So you do like four to five rounds of this, which is gonna make you nice and warm before the session actually starts. So turn the heater down, get warmed up, continue and press pause. All right, so the middle of our session today will be plain ass mobility. We gotta do a pigeon stretch and we're gonna hit a groiner with a twist in there. So I'm gonna have Slow and Kenneth set up the uh, pigeon right away. They're gonna start with the left leg in front. I'm gonna have my timer ready and at home, if you forgot, we're doing this with us, right? So we're all starting in three, two, one, and we're right on. So Slow is sitting slightly more upright and Kenneth is more in the laying down position. I'm fine with both. Since we're doing this, um, let's see, three times in total, you're totally okay with alternating styles. We're doing half of the round in one style and half of the minute in another style. Now, I do want you to focus on keeping your hips and shoulders squared at all times and keeping your back knee behind your hip while your front knee has this big bend going on. Now, the more you place the bottom part of your leg forward, the harder it becomes, but it might also become more painful on your knee and you want to avoid that because you're trying to stretch your glutes, your lower back here, right? Good. So we have five more seconds and then we stay on the same side, go to a groiner. Three, two, one. We got 15 seconds to switch. We're going to have Kevin as well already set up the groiner so you guys can tag along and see what's happening. Now in the starting position, the knee is going to be on the ankle and the back knee is going to be behind the hip. The elbow is going to be reached down. Then from there, we start, we open up and we rotate away from the standing leg while keeping that leg in line. So keep that knee in line with the ankle while you rotate away from it. Very nice corner with the twist in there. So the passive corner for you guys to know is where you just hang out into the bottom with your elbow as close to the floor as possible. And now we're throwing that dynamic element in there. Very bright, a great way to obviously stretch the groin area. That's why it's called the groin. And uh, also a great way to get the back hip flexor with some more action. As long as that back knee stays behind the hip, we're all good there. So we got five more seconds. And then we have 15 seconds to do transition time, as in going to the other side of the pigeon. And we rest. So right leg goes in front here. We move on. We set up the stretch of the pigeon and we start in five, four, three, two, one, now. There we go. So at home, if you just tag on, we're doing that mobility portion right now. If you're just looking at us doing the stretches, you can fast forward and then start yourself or you play back and start with us. I'd love you to play back and start with us. This is also trying to give you some cues while being in the stretch, right? Always square, shoulders and hips. Always back knee way behind the hip, specifically in this stretch. And then front knee with a good bend going on. You see the difference, right? Kenneth is very relaxed, sitting into that bottom, really focusing on getting his hips down. So I was really pressing his butt square there because it's very hard when you sit more upright. So they're just different. It's not that one is harder than the other, they're slightly different. Three, two, one. 15 seconds to switch, get into the groiner. We're doing the right leg forward first, position yourself in that lunge, but now the front knee is on the ankle and not in front. And we have three, two, one. And let's start with the rotations away from the front leg and keep that knee in line. Often when I see people do this twisting motion, is once they start rotating, they let the knee cave in. We're trying to fight that actively, right? There we go, beautiful twists in the groiner stretch. So we have 20 more seconds. Fifteen more. Last 10 seconds. Since it's 12 intervals, this is actually one round, everything we did with you. And you're going to do two more of these, which is eight more intervals, right? So two more of these. You guys keep working on your mobility and press pause.
At that point in time where you think you've done enough burpees and you've done all the simple burpees, we're going to throw you some very weird variations today. Three different variations to be very precise of the regular burpee. We're going to have a double squat burpee with two perfect executed squats in every burpee. We're going to do the double push-up burpee, which we've done before, with two perfect push-ups in the burpee. And we're going to do the double frog jump burpee, which is an additional frog jump that we often do as a separate movement, but now we do it as an additional one in the burpee. Great. Now, after that, we're going to show you a tons of different scaling options, which you have if you have different injuries, so you can still tag along in this workout. Now, let's have a look at the movements first. I have Swal, I have Kenneth here showing you what to do. Now they're going to start on a slow pace with showing you got double squat burpees. Let's go guys. So while they're going on here, they're making a regular burpee, but they want to make the first squat look perfect and the second one as well. So once they catch the burpee, they're in a squat, they add a squat, they finish with the jump as they always do and they go back into the burpee. You see the additional squat, right? You don't want to ditch that one. It's a double squat. It not, it's not a half and a squat, it's a double squat. Very nice. Good, let's rest, gentlemen, let's rest. So that was a double squat burpee, right? Obviously, as always, you can adjust the tempo by stepping back and forth in the burpee, but you want to have that two squat thing going on every rep. That's a necessity. Now, let's have a look at the second one, the double push-up burpee, where I specifically want to see two perfect push-ups right away. Let's go. So you catch. You do three perfect push-ups, and the second one you jump up, you go again. Here we go. You do two perfect push-ups, you extend, you come up, and you go. Let's rest, gentlemen, here. That's good. Okay, now Ken is going to show you what to do if the push-up itself is very difficult for you to do. You're then going to do a strong eccentric push-up. You're going to warm up. Another eccentric push-up. You warm up, and you jump. You're still going to get some more action in than you would normally do in a burpee. You're still getting some more strength work within that set. It's going to make it a slower movement, and that is all good for this variation. Now, my favorite one, the double frog jump burpee. Gentlemen, good luck with demoing this one. Let's show the double frog jump burpee to the people at home. At home, you might want to pause the screen and really check what's going on here. Good. And then finish. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Let's go. Jump. Up. Boom. Quick jump, jump. There we go. Nice. There's no high score. Everything for the people at home. Jump. Good. Down. Jump. Good. And finish. That's beautiful. Okay, so I really need you guys to pay attention here to go through all the injury options that we need to discuss for these variations of the burpees. Now, what we'll do first is look at the added element and the injury that can be... Okay. So let's have a look at the injury options for all of these burpee styles here. Now we're going to specifically look at the injury that's related to the added element in the burpee. And in the end, we'll also look at what if the burpee itself is causing you issues. So we're going to try to be creative here and come up with different stuff for you guys. So the first thing, let's have a look. If the double squat burpee is an issue because of squatting, we're going to do a double hinge burpee. So Ken is going to show you guys that. You're going to jump back, you're going to jump up in hinge, you're going to stand up, tap the floor, finish in the jump, and go into the next one. So he added an additional hinge in the burpee. Beautiful. That's if you can squat. I right, rest, buddy. Now, the second one had the push-up in there. Now, instead of doing the pressing motion, right, we're going to add six shoulder taps in this one. Let's do six shoulder taps, Ken. One, two, three, four, five, six, finish in style, boom, and another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, good, rest. That is if the pressing is going to be an issue for you in this specific movement, the double push-up burpee. Now, the double frog jump burpee, we substitute the frog jump for six additional mountain climbers, and then obviously after that, we need to step up instead of jump up. Let's go because the frog jump is literally doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, step up, finish the burpee. All right, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, step up the burpee. That was a tiny frog jump in there, that's all good. You guys get it. Okay, now, let's have a look at this. These were the specific things related to the new elements we introduced into the burpee. Now let's do injuries for the burpee itself, and that is first, I cannot jump at all. Now take everything you already said, and then add this, which is stepping back, stepping up, and not jumping in the finish. 
So a regular burpee, stepping, coming all the way down, coming all the way up, stepping and finishing with a clap and that's it. Boom, here we go. Now, we also have the option of, hey man, you showed me tons of stuff, but I cannot even do this because of an injury in the shoulder or the back or the elbow. In that case, everything we did still stands, but we just do kickback. So just a regular kickback, hands stay in plank there, boom, the elbows never ever bend. Perfect way of scaling the movements. Ah, solid. So, if we have all of this discussed, we should be good in coming up with a good way of doing three different variations of the burpee. Let's get ready. Okay, that was a lot of talk, just... Okay. So, there was a lot of talk about just burpees. Lots of different variations. Now it's time to put them all into action. And what we'll do is set a timer at nine intervals. Every interval has 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. You do variation one, variation two, variation three, and then three loops in total of that. The idea is to do as many repetitions as possible. But what we showed you was that we're working on standards here. We have new standards for the burpee. We need very strict push-ups, very strict squats and proper frog jumps. Don't get mixed up in that. Make them look pretty, okay? Now, I'm gonna have Swall and Kenneth start here, and you start with us right away. Let's get this burpee magic going. And we start with the uh, double squat one in three, two, one, let's go. 45 seconds of burpees with an additional squat in there. Nice. I do want you to always finish being off the floor with the feet, tiny little jump. You either bring your hands up or not. I'm all game with both. As long as you show me proper full extension. Need and hips locked out, air underneath your shoes is what I'm looking for. Not the air in the shoe, the air underneath the shoe. That's what we aim for. 20 more seconds, gentlemen. Very nice. I like the pacing of uh, Swan and Kennedy. I hope you guys are trying to mimic the pacing here. It's, it's not extremely fast, but it's very good. Five, four, three, two, one. 15 seconds of rest. Get your heart rate down. Get the breathing going. <laughs> 10 more seconds, and then we go to my favorite one, the double push on burpee. I lied, I said the double frog jump was my favorite, but still. Three, two, one, game time again. Second variation, double push up burpee. And these are gonna blow up the chest big time. And they're actually gonna make the other burpees even harder. Good, good, good. So 15 seconds in, and what you see normally, if you're fast, you can easily get to 15 to 20 uh, burpees in a minute, so a good 12 to 15 and 45 seconds. But now with the added element in there, the pacing is just slower, and that is all good. We just add some strength work in there, right? Some more body weight strength work. All right, 10 more seconds. Let's go guys, get one or two more reps in. I'll count it out from five, four, three, two, one. 15 second break. And after the 15 second break, we are going to do my favorite one, and that's the double frog jump. So we do the bottom half of the grip twice. Three, two, one, let's go gentlemen. Boom, sit up, go right back down, sit up, solid, there we go, double frog jump grippy. Loving this one gentlemen, 45 seconds at home, please get your heart rate up, get intense with us. 30 more seconds. And I know you want to rest interval after this, and I'll tell you what, you don't get it. You're gonna go right back into the first one after, and this will be an intense pass. Three, two, one, and rest. 15 seconds of rest. Two more rounds, good luck, press pause. 